is saying no to this rezoning, Industry City's private rezoning. We're saying, we said it no a year ago, we're still saying it. No rezoning, no condition. No rezoning, no condition. No rezoning, no condition. No rezoning, no condition. About 12 years ago, Sunset Park was rezoned. It was a racist rezoning. It upzoned a community of color, of mostly immigrants. And at that time, under Bloomberg, we fought. And now, again, under de Blasio's administration, he's, a, he's about to oversee uh, another rezoning in Sunset Park, a private developer that's going to destroy our community. Yes. What's over? Uh, we're here to tell Corey Johnson, the Speaker of City Council, don't be like Dollar Bill de Blasio. Yes, don't that's support right. real, big real estate. Protect the communities in New York City that make this city what it is. And uh, we've collected thousands of petitions supporting this position. No rezoning. No, no conditions. Condition. No rezoning. No, no conditions. No rezoning. No, no conditions. And we, we have here members of the Sunset Park community uh, to present these petitions to Corey Johnson. Uh, you wanna first um, have Claudia Galicia from Latino, um, Sunset Park Latino Democrats. Gracias. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, saying it in Spanish and then I'll translate. Pero primero en español. Buenas tardes a todos. Buenas tardes. Estamos aquí hoy porque Corey Johnson ha decidido darnos la espalda. Yes, a pesar right. de que él estuvo en Sunset Park cuando se estaba religiendo, hoy nos da la espalda. Y que no se olvide que hay elecciones y que los estamos viendo. Ellos son nuestros representantes electos. Nosotros los elegimos para que ellos puedan llevar nuestra voz al Consejo Municipal. Pero lo que está pasando es que toda esta gente que está aquí, mayormente inmigrantes, como pueden ver, hemos dicho no a la resonificación. Right. Es una re resonificación uh! que no ayuda a nuestras comunidades. Los trabajos que Industry City ofrece no son para nuestra comunidad. Sin en cambio, nuestras casas están en peligro. Mi hermano fue desplazado de Sunset Park porque su landlord no quería tomarle su renta más. ¿Por qué? Porque en vez de pagar 100 dólares, él sabía que podía rentar ese apartamento en 2,000 y 3,000 dólares. Entonces, hoy estamos aquí para que ninguna otra familia pase por lo que mi familia ha pasado. Mi hermano ha tenido que dormir en el sofá de mi mamá con sus hijos y ahora está viviendo en otra parte. No tenemos, nuestras familias inmigrantes deben de quedarse ahí. Hemos estado ahí por más de 20 años. Industry City tiene una historia mala. En el 2010, cuando mi hija nació, la comunidad mexicana tenía las puertas abiertas a Industry City porque teníamos negocios mexicanos en Industry City. Pero cuando vino Jamestown, lo sacaron a todos. Los negocios fueron de ser fructíferos a esas mismas familias a estar en food stamps. Entonces, hay algo muy importante en esta resonificación. Esta resonificación es para gente rica. Y la gente que está aquí somos familias trabajadoras. No tenemos casa en los Hamptons. No tenemos casa en Catskills. Solo tenemos una casa y eso es Sunset Park. Por eso estamos hoy para decir que Sunset Park no se vende. Sunset Park no se vende. Sunset Park no se vende. my translation a little bit shorter. We're here today because as you can see, Cory Johnson has turned into, uh, he's turning his back at immigrants. When he was campaigning, I saw him in Sunset Park, but I never saw him again. And today we are here working families, immigrants, Chinese, Latinos, Puerto Ricanos, Mexicanos, we're here to say no to this unjust rezoning. Why? Why are we saying no? When my daughter, which is born 
we used to celebrate our Dia de Muertos in Industry City. Industry City had Mexican business back then, but then changed down to over. And what happened? Small businesses were displaced. Big factories were turned. People went from having a business to food stops. So now, what is Boris Johnson doing? He is saying, even though he's an elected official, he's saying, actually, no. I'm not going to listen to you because my interest is first. So we're calling Cory Johnson today, don't be a Republican. That's right. Immigrant communities have been punished by Republicans. You have seen the wave of ice. What was that caused? By Republicans. And now we, they want to displace us. Is that a Democrat thing? That's a Republican thing. So we are asking Cory Johnson, be a progressive Democrat and side with the people. My brother was a big day because of the speculation that Industry City is going to bring better things for the community. When the landlord heard that, he started raising the rent. But my brother, could only pay 1100 and the landlord knew that he can charge more. He was evicted. He was sleeping on my mother's couch for a while, and then he was displaced to another community. So where, where are our elected officials? That is just one story of the many. All those, all those petitions that we're delivering today, we went to churches, we went to schools, we went to senior centers to collect them, to see if people agree with our reasoning, and everybody say no. These are um, petitions from the streets, from the churches, and from volunteers. We don't have the thousands of dollars that Industry City has to launch a campaign and pay thousands of thousands of dollars. If we were ordinary workers. So we want to ask New York City Mayor, we want to ask Corey Johnson, who is an elected official, listen to the people, listen to the immigrants, don't be a Republican. Republicans have already attacked immigrants enough. You are here to help us, not to displace us. Thank you. I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Jay Fong and I'm with the Sunset Park Organized Neighbors and we're just a group of neighbors that came together because we saw what was happening in our community and we wanted it to stop and like Claudia was saying you know we spent a long time gathering these petitions talking to people and it was a resounding no we don't want to be displaced even they have jobs there we it's not worth the cost of living that it's going to create uh, and the way that it's going to displace because this is not just about housing it's about a community a living community uh, where, where we buy our, our food and our, our things, um, where people work, where we live, where we have our friends and our, our, uh, our, our connections to, um, and in, in particularly for immigrants, for people who speak the same language and have the same culture and, and, and are able to uh, build a, and make this great city what it is. Um, that's what we're, we're gonna lose if, uh, you know, and we're saying specifically Corey Johnson, because he has a lot of weight as the speaker, and in the past he doesn't have a great track record. Of, he has a, he actually has a track record of following de Blasio's city planning council and making really bad decisions that are promoting racism. And so this is what you know. And taking from the um, the uprising and the the extremely uh, amazing uh, grassroots um, action uh, that we've seen in this city. This is anti-racism. This is the, the kind of fight that we need right now to protect our communities. To not just, uh, you know, every day, the kind of state violence that's being inflicted on people. Um, and so uh, I'm going to introduce Colleen um, Diaz, uh, also a member of Vaughn. Hey, everyone. And, um, thanks for coming out today. Um, in the middle of a deadly pandemic that has impacted communities like Sunset Park disproportionately, the mayor has resumed Euler, and Industry City is heavily lobbying the city council in an effort to bypass the community's will. We are here because the people of Sunset Park have said no. 
The community board has said no. The council member has said no. The community and our allies stand in solidarity against this rezoning, and we don't need another public hearing to voice this. Displacement is the oldest social justice issue in this country, and one we have yet to reconcile. Rich Capital has figured out better marketing strategies to remove people from their homes, but we are still reliving this same narrative today in neighborhoods like Sunset Park, the Lower East Side, Flushing, and Inwood, in areas that 10 to 20 years ago, young white suburbanites stayed far from and likely didn't know existed. Neighborhoods that have been historically underfunded and left to figure it out for themselves, but these are neighborhoods rich in community and culture where many low-income and immigrant families have been able to take root, run small businesses, and afford homes. And now, Industry City, with the help from Mayor de Blasio's displacement agenda, are poised to decimate Sunset Park, all in the midst of a pandemic, where many in our community are trying to figure out how we eat, how we pay rent, and honestly, how we pay off funeral expenses. We know why this rezoning is bad. 20,000 jobs? Unlikely for a landlord to deliver. And what jobs and for who? The people of Sunset Park can't afford to make avocado toast at minimum wage for rich white people. We know Industry City's business model is a failure and antiquated. The city doesn't need another bankrupted luxury mall like Hudson Yard. We also have to look long term and seriously ask what will happen to this area once the only restrictions are eased. Will the owners sell to Amazon like they have openly solicited and since, you know, this is what they did with Chelsea Market and Google? How many years will it even be before Industry City sits underwater? Why would the city agree to more office and retail space in an area that will be flooded in the next major storm? Industry City is short-sighted with small ideas. The people of Sunset Park have big, bold ideas about how our community can not just re remain, but thrive. We just need elected officials and a city government that will finally work for us and not for real estate investors. If the city council votes to approve Industry City's rezoning application, they will be responsible for another community loss. Using your voice and power to stop racist rezoning to displace BIPOC schools is the hard work of anti-racism. Speaker Cory Johnson, will you perpetuate the failed policies of Mayor de Blasio and side with rich developers, or will you return to the people of Sunset Park? I'm going to introduce um, uh, uh, Vincent Tao, uh, a local long-time resident of Sunset Park.大家好 仍然会有很多商家会受到影响，很多居民没有办法不还租，而会被面临逼迁。然而正在这个时候呢，这些地产开发商却趁这个机会呢，还在推的这些啊啊土改计划，想要趁机通过这些计划，在那个商家办那边
把这些情报书交给这个议长张成，这个 Cory Johnson。我们要求他不可以再向我们不需要另一个白色。好，他应该听取民意，否决这个工业城的土改计划，停止官商勾结。如果他这次仍然一意孤行的话，就很明显这是官商勾结的。我们这么多人站出来，这么多事在那些工听会也好，集会也好，这么多请愿书交到他手上，如果他继续。继续帮这些开发商赚钱，我们就要终结他的政治生涯，好不好？好。Central Park community has already been facing challenges in the past few months, in the in the time of the pandemic. We are very finding very difficult to pay the rent, and the small businesses are very hard to sustain. But now, industry city use this opportunity to push for their rezoning. That would des further decimate our community. By bringing in luxury luxury hotels and big chain stores, this is going to make much more difficult. And last year, our community has collected over 4,000 petition signatures and have a series of action to demand the city stop industry city rezoning. And our council member Manchuka has stood with us, and he's here today also to stood with our community to say no. But now, Council Speaker Corey Johnson trying to bypass the community to try to approve this uh, industry city rezoning. We don't want another Mayor de Blasio in office to do that. We want our next mayor to stand with the community. So now today we, we're here to demand Corey Johnson not to be like Mayor de Blasio, stop colluding with uh, uh, industry city, stop colluding with luxury developers, stand with the communities and say no to industry city rezoning. Tomorrow, there's going to be a hearing. Even in, in the midst of this pandemic, uh, you know, the, everything is reopening, including city planning, and it, there's going to be a, um, an online hearing that most people will probably not be able to participate in. That ain't but right. We're, we're encouraging, yeah, participation because we, and that's partly why we're here today, is to say that these signatures matter. People's voices matter. We're not going to jump through, continue to jump through these hoops. Uh, but we need to keep speaking out and keep advocating. And uh, like um, Vincent has said, we're you know uh, we're honored. Uh, we're really glad that uh, our council member has uh, taken a stand against the rezoning, and he's here to speak up. Uh, um, Council member Carlos Machaca and also public advocate Jumani Williams. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Estamos aquí en solidaridad. We are here in solidarity. Industry City nos dice con palabras sin confianza que nos van a traer 20 mil trabajos. Industry City is telling us that they're going to bring 20,000 jobs. Y esas palabras no llegan con una garantía. No, no, no pueden garantizar 20 mil trabajos. They cannot guarantee 20,000 jobs. Pero te digo algo. Si sí pueden garantizar el desplazamiento de nuestras comunidades, inmigrantes y trabajadores. And I will tell you this, that they can guarantee the displacement of our community, our immigrant community, our working family community. So I am here today to stand with the community that has been fighting so hard to make their voices heard. Now we went through a process that we could hear everybody, and boy did we hear everybody. But we are strong now today with the conclusion that this rezoning should not pass, and that the city council should respect the community and say no, basta, basta, enough. We're done with this conversation. We have to say no. And the rest of the city council will be listening to the community because they are going to come together tomorrow and speak their voice. How many of you have signed up to speak tomorrow? Raise your hand. And you're going to be speaking tomorrow. Raise your hand. Awesome. That is what we're here today to let everybody know that tomorrow is the only public hearing and it's going to happen, unfortunately, on Zoom. 
That is the unfortunate nature of where we are right now with our zoning. Otro punto que quiero decir. Los trabajos que merecemos nosotros son trabajos verdes, conectado al ambiente miedo, al uh, medio ambiente. The work and the jobs that our community wants are connected to green jobs, jobs that are connected to climate change and responding to climate change. That's what our community has, has asked for. Industry City's jobs are connected to retail, hotel. Those are not the jobs for Sunset Park. Those are not the jobs for a future of a city that deserves a transformation and a just transition. The final thing I want to say is that we're not alone. You've heard the countless testimonies across this entire time, and these community members that have decided to come out and endanger their lives to speak out against Industry City, they are not alone. The Congress member, Nidia Velasquez, has been very specific about her opposition to this, to this project. She's the federal representative that, that fights for us in Washington. Zelnor Myrie, and we have our, uh, his representative here, Adlin, is also against this rezoning. And he fights for us in Albany in the state senate. The two incoming representatives, Marcella Metenes yeah. and Jabari Brisport, who just got elected in the primaries, are also against this. Yeah. And I, as the city council member, that should be the leading voice in the city council about what's going on am opposed to this. It is time to say no. It is time to say no with one voice. Thank you so much for coming out today. And I want to introduce you to you. I want to introduce to you someone who has been fighting along uh, uh, along our side in Sunset Park and across the entire city. My brother in the city council, but now a public advocate, Jumani Williams. Hola, como esta? What's up everybody, how you doing? Uh, I'm excited to be standing here with the community where everybody else should be. Uh, the community is correct as often is. This is the only needs to stop when we need to pause. You know, uh, I'm going to date myself, many people may not remember the song, but there's a song when I think about it, every time I hear of how catastrophic it would be if we don't do a rezoning by Sunshine Anderson and went, I heard it all before. And it is a true statement. Every time we get to these, there's going to be a catastrophe. The, the, the impact to the city will be catastrophic. But in fact, what has been catastrophic is all of the rezonings we've allowed to go through. And in fact, if you had listened to so many of us before, the city might not be in the position it is right now. I heard all the things that people talked about at Hudson Yards. But right now, Hudson Yards, if they haven't sped up gentrification, has done absolutely nothing to help. And right now, Hudson Yards, which is built for the people who can afford luxury, is siphoning off much needed taxpayer money that we need in this budget. I hear elected officials complaining about the results of recent elections because their community has changed. Some of us didn't have a problem with the results, but the people who did, their community has changed. But they're the ones who voted on the rezonings that changed the community. That's right. That's right. These rezonings have not helped the city of New York. They have increased displacement. They have sped up gentrification. We never see the continuum of jobs that people promise. I want to be clear, I want to see construction jobs. I want to see good union construction jobs. But they can't be at the expense of the future of the city. And they can't be at the expense of the people who've been in this community and have made it a place that people want to come to. They can't be at the expense of making sure our waterfront is safe for these storms that we know are coming. They can't be at the expense of using this to build sustainable and renewable energy so that we can have the jobs that we needed for that. We are not saying we don't want any kind of development. We are saying we want to look toward the future. Being penny wise and pound foolishness has brought us right here where we are today. If we had put in these measures long ago, the impact might not have been so hard when it came to COVID-19. 
the community that you're most worried about might have been shored up in a different way. Let's not keep making the same mistakes over and over again. That is the definition of insanity. So we're asking Energy City Shut it down. to just come to the table and have a conversation. The things that are being proposed are not crazy and are not outlandish. You know what it is? Trying to build a luxury hotel at a time when nobody's coming to New York That is crazier than anything I have heard someone present here. No, we have the racial impact study that's been bottled up for many years. I hope we can finally have a hearing on that because it is very important if we're going to move forward with these rezonings that we understand the impact that they're going to have in the community because we've seen the impact that it has on the community. We've seen the impact that it has on New York City. Don't go through another major resort like this without having questions answered about the impact. Because we keep focusing and pretending like our city is not worse off for all of these rezonings. We haven't solved the housing problem. We haven't solved the homelessness problem. It's worse than ever. So all we're asking is the council and the mayor. Normally, you know, I push back because I, I worried about member deference. But this probably shouldn't be the first time that you don't listen if you're going to go that way. We have a local council member, not just a local council member, all of the local elected officials right. who are saying this is a bad rezoning. And I just want to, the people in the public hopefully will listen because what they're going to present is somehow that the people are unreasonable and they don't want any development. Nothing could be further from the truth. And I'll say it again. The present plan with luxury hotels is worse than anything that I've heard this community push forward. And the community has a long-term vision. What I've seen now is short-term at best and would harm the city. And we need leadership that's going to help guide us through some very, very tough days, Get four or five years in advance, this is zoning ahead. We can't have construction jobs. We can't have long-term jobs that are not less than what people are making now, and we can't have sustainable energy and a sustainable uh, a platform and grids that are gonna push us into the future. That's what we need in Industry City. That's what we can have if we have leadership that helps guide us. Peace and blessings, everyone like that. Thanks so much, Thank No rezoning, no condition. No rezoning, no condition. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so on behalf of the Congresswoman, she just wants to make sure that the community knows that she stands in support of this. Um, in support of your in support of your your op opposition to this. And she wants to make sure that city council understands and knows that she stands behind her city council member and that she asks every city council member to support his decision. The Congresswoman has also um, submitted uh, a statement on this on August the 6th, uh, and she wants to, everybody to know that she will be testifying tomorrow. Yeah. So please stay tuned. We will be a part of that. And she is definitely in support of, of these jobs. But we don't need... Industry City doesn't need to ha to make this happen in order to bring jobs into Sunset Park. So she wants to make sure that people understand that. So that that's all she has to say. Thank you so much. And we'd also like to invite um, uh, State Senator Delner Mary as uh, representative. Hi, thank you so much. And I just want to reiterate what all of um, our team colleagues have said that Senator Myrie stands with the community and with um, in support of uh, the council member um, in Chaka as well as the public advocate in his um, opposition to the rezoning and he will also be submitting testimony um, as well. He's not gonna, he would, he would be with you today but he's not feeling well so I'm here representing him. So thank you so much. Woo! Thank you. And I want to repeat a, a theme that we've all talked about today is that if this isn't the way that we should develop, that we need to really center this around the people of the community and their best interests. We're not pretending to represent everyone in the community. We represent the working people. 
We're gonna deliver these petitions. Yeah. We're gonna take these petitions to 250 Broadway. About 4,000 petitions. And we're gonna deliver them to our employee Justin's uh, office over here. Okay, anyone follow us. We're going to go to his office. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,